You are listening to the postcast presented by the Locked On Senators podcast following a 4-2 Sens victory in Philadelphia in game 82 in what makes it the final game of the 2021-22 season. I'm Ross Levitan, if you can recognize my voice, alongside Brandon Piller, as always, and recurring guest on the postcast at Laleem's Martian. Pilsy, take the, take the baton, man. What'd you think of this one? Man, what a way to bounce back from that terrible showing last night. And it, it's too bad it's on the road, not in front of the fans, but at least you get to finish off the season with a nice 4-2 victory. And uh, I had a couple shekels on this game, so that puck line goal by Austin Watson really helped out my wallet. Love it. What a way to finish. Let's get into milestones, because not only does Brady Kachuk score his 30th goal of the Mm -hmm. season, Austin Watson gets his 10th, and Josh Norris gets his 35th. Which one is most impressive? To me, it's got to be the 30, 30 goals from Captain Brady Kachuk. Uh, I think that was a milestone that he had set out from the beginning of the season till now. And, uh, it, I mean, it took it down to the very last uh, end, of the, end of the season for him to be able to get it done. But um, I think everybody's really happy to see him hit that 30-goal mi- milestone because, I mean, that just basically – that's a separating, you know, goal tier. You know, 30 goals – and at 22 years old, boy, it's like, like, that's a hell of an accomplishment. So you got to be extremely happy with uh, him being able to hit that there. Although the 35, I mean, when it comes to like a, a milestone that's going to, you know, have a big effect on your life, hitting 35 for Josh Norris in a contract season, <laughs> coming off an ELC, how often does that happen? I, I'm pretty sure like the last guy who probably did that was Austin Matthews. And look what he's doing now. So when you, when you look at like, you know, what – where they're at, at at the age that they're at right now, boys, you got to be excited, uh, you know, for next season. Uh, and I always like ending things on a high note here with the W. So that's huge. Yeah. My, Matthews and line eight come to mind as like the two only guys in, in recent years that would have hit that 35 goal plateau. And he did it missing 18 games with yeah. injury. So I believe it was 66 games total, 35 goals. That's absolutely sick on the anniversary of Pajot's four goal game four goals that's absolutely sick how about 35 on a season when you're 21 years old we'll have plenty of time to break down josh norris's next contract what the offseason can bring we're going to focus just on tonight's game for now and if you want a more wide scope coverage of the ottawa senators why don't you check out today's locked on senators where we had lassie thompson on the show could he make the opening night roster next year we'll get into that because that could signal the end of of a tenure for many players in tonight's lineup, like Chris Tierney, like Adam Gaudet, like Dylan Gambrell up front. But on the back end, there's guys with term. Pilsy, how do you think that decor is going to shake out going to next year? Well, hopefully Zaitsev's not a part of it. Other than that, I don't have too many issues here because Jake Sanderson is going to come in and... Although it's a lot to put on a guy's shoulder to say, hey, we need you to be a top four defenseman in your first year in the NHL. If anyone can do it, I think Jake Sanderson can. And he can make an impact. Like It's basically like picking up a a free agent because you're getting a a guy that is one of the best defensemen not currently in the NHL. So I'm I'm definitely relieved that Sanderson's coming in here on his ELC. Nonetheless, that helps. But... um, yeah, I, I think they're they're in good shape. Once everybody gets healthy for next season, I'm liking the way things are looking. Yeah, I mean, me too. And and the biggest question mark for me right now is it has to be Eric Branstrom, right? Like when you look at and I'm not not I like I mean I know it seems like you know sometimes I, I point out his flaws more often than not, but I think it's just a matter of when you're looking at, at what the decor is going to look like, and you have Shabbat and Sanderson ahead of him as the two offensive guys, yeah. right? And, he, you know, he's done a really good job. I, I honestly, I'm not taking anything away from what he's done at the end of this season here because he has looked really good in that role when he's getting the minutes and he's getting the power play time and things like that. And I think he could still be a definitely an asset on the power play. But, I mean, like, you kind of run out of room when you have Sanderson and Shabbat who are going to be in front of him in the lineup. So then that makes him a third-pairing defenseman. And when I'm thinking about roles on a team and I'm thinking about – where Eric Branstrom is going to be, you know, a bigger asset. Definitely, he should be in the top four producing offense. And if he's going to be a third pairing guy, I mean, like, I can think of so many other guys I'd rather have in a role like that, right? Where, you you know, primarily going to be a shutdown role where you're supposed to be, you know, boxing guys out and taking care of your own end, managing the puck. And those are things that he struggles with. So for me, 
I, I, that's the huge question mark is whether they decide to keep him as, as like a filler, like anything can happen, right? You get one injury, he can pop, pop right into that top four and look great. Like he has already, yeah. but what are you going to do when you got Shabbat and Brand or, and Sanderson right there, right? You can't, unless you, and you can't put them together either. Right. So t- to me, he's just the odd man out. And obviously my opinion would be that you got to remove Zaitsev from that equation. And then yeah. if that's the case and Branstrom ends up being the odd man out, then your weak link is, is, uh, is either Hammond or Holden, right? Those are the two guys who I would say would probably be the weak link on that back end, which so far, like the way they look and sends uniforms, like that's pretty good if that's your weakest guy. And I think for Branson, though, uh, Leaves Martian, the one thing that kind of gives them time is, uh, I don't know why I dropped the full uh, full, full handle. Full at at, at Leaves Martian, check it out on Twitter, definitely. Um, full but name, Use my the, <laughs> the thing with Branson is they the team has control, right? So it's not like Brandy's going to have a lot of leverage to get a big contract or a big AAV. He's still young. So you can give him more time. You can have him as that third pair guy that, like you said, can bounce up and down and it's not going to cost you anything. And his trade value is like barely anything. So you're not going to let him go. Yeah. You're, you're saying exactly where I was about to go. Cause let's yeah. not forget that he, he swapped agents at early in this season, right? Like he, he switched out his agents. So let's not forget that when a guy changes agents, it's not because he's super stoked about like, how he's <laughs> yeah. handled, you know, like you don't just get rid of an agent. I don't think that really stuff like that happens very often unless the player's looking for some kind of change of scenery and the guy he's working with isn't getting it done. Um, so that's something to note as well there, I think. But obviously there was no official trade request, but I can't imagine Branstrom was, was, was happy with where he was in the, you know, in the organization around that time. You know what? At the start of the year, I would I'd have time to listen to that argument. He's been playing 22 minutes a night, yep. first power play. Shabbat missed like 15 games. So you know what? You can't score a single goal with all that. I know he's a defensive. That's not what he does. But Nikita Zaitsev has four goals this year. Travis Hamnick has a goal as a senator. Yeah, and speaking of the vibes, I just paused my TV. Look at this. The vibes on this team are immaculate. Look at this. So they're, they're showing the goal. Brady's doing an interview. Watch this. <laughs> Watch as Josh Norris comes behind him, gives him the little up. Oh, how are you? I think he was trying to do. I think he was trying to do thirty, like his yeah. thirty goals, and then he just ended up doing doing the glasses. That's hilarious. The, the vibes are are unmatched for sure. Oh, and I'm seeing some draft talk in the. I chat. would love. I would love to know which which of the senators are actually going to be staying in town over the over the off season, right? And maybe the guys are going to band up and do even more team bonding over the off season. I know a lot of them end up going home, but. Yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, if the if the vibes are that good, maybe the guys want to stick around town. Yeah, I think what I'm most concerned about or curious because there hasn't been a peep out of it. We were expecting Jake Sanderson to return sometime in this this week or last week or next week. Is he going to be among the number of guys who are going to Belleville tomorrow? I don't know. Like to me, that's a huge question mark. I think he should, but I don't know where he's at or. I know there are some reports. Maybe he's going to the World Championships instead. I have no idea, but I'm extremely curious. Yeah, not another how, international how... event for Sanderson. Like that, we've <laughs> seen that has not gone yeah. his way recently. So maybe just keep no. him home. Yeah, but how how watchable would Belleville Senators hockey all of a sudden really become oh. when you get Ridley Gregg, uh, Jake Sanderson, and possibly Tyler Boucher as well? You mix him in there as like a potential guy to fill in. Woo, that could be a really fun team for all Sense fans to get involved with watching, right? Like if you're if you're not done with Sense hockey for the year and you want to watch a little more, yep. that'll be a lot of fun, right? It would also be good news for a show that covers the Ottawa and Belleville Senators five days a week. You can catch Locked On Senators Monday through Friday. We're not going anywhere until after free agency. That's when we'll go down to our three shows per week. And right now, you mentioned Ridley Gregg's name, Martian. Yeah, they're down two nothing. In game five in the second period, that series is tied at two. So the draft lottery is May 10th, and the Ottawa Senators are locked in to seventh spot, which is great to see because they got the win. Nerves were there for sure because they could have gone all the way up to nine or down to nine, I should say, uh, in terms of lottery odds. Now, it only would have taken a percentage off, but two more spots, both divisional rivals as well, so you don't want to have them picking ahead. So, Lots more, and yes, uh, Deham, sorry about my pronunciation, not like I can pronounce anything right now. Um, we will be doing something <laughs> special on May 10th. We will be doing something special on May 10th. That is 
100%. But we do have a lot of time to get into all that. It was the last game of the season. It was a victory. The Ottawa Senators finished with the most points they've had in an 82-game season in four years. That in itself is something to a little golf clap. Not stick taps, golf clap for this one, for sure. But I love the milestone aspect of it. And it didn't start out that way because we have to talk about that first penalty. Like, what is going on with NHL officiating, Pilsy? Yeah, that, that was brutal. That, that's the one where um, Kaslik gets the slashing penalty when his stick broke and Brady was pissed, right? Yeah, that was crap. Yeah, that was absolute garbage. I, and I'm glad Brady didn't just accept it. He had a lot to say about it because on the replay, and I love Brady being like, hey, watch the replay because it was terrible. Yeah, there's, brutal. Yeah, play. there's not even anything you can really even comment on, right, Pilsy? Because there's there was nothing there. Like he, he, did, he did a stick lift, like a, a regular old stick lift, and, and nothing happened. Nobody even won the puck between the two players. It just carried on like – that's one you could just let go a hundred times out of a hundred, and no one's gonna notice anything about it. I don't know why they why they decided to call that. That was crazy to me. Yeah, Ross, you it, said earlier, like NHL officiating has been really bad lately. It's oh like yeah, they they, they got to go under the microscope. Like, this, everything's this everything's season. a circle. Like the the scoring is going up, the refing is terrible. It's like it's like we're just going through that same cycle over again. It's so crazy. I know. I, I'm really curious to see what's going to happen come postseason because yep. we know sometimes the whistles get put away. I don't know, man. Right I, now, yeah, it's just the inconsistency. Be, there's no way they can keep calling what they're what they've been calling in the playoffs without just getting berated, right? Yeah, no doubt. Hey, by the way, locked in matchup now: Leafs Lightning. <laughs> yeah, oh, look oh, out! Oh my that. god. <laughs> I like it. I mean, I'm a locked on player, locked on player, Listen, Nick Paul. Tampa, Tampa, we know they can do it, but that's got to be a tired group too, right? Yeah. They've been playing a lot but of hockey. They've switched a lot of their players, right? Like that whole third line's gone. You bring in Nick Paul. Like they have a lot of new blood in there to kind of help uh, get fresh legs in. So, and if anyone knows how to get past the first round, and if anyone yeah. doesn't know how to get past the first round, I mean, like the Leafs, there yeah. you go. As the Leafs, like you, you can't ask for a tougher opponent. As like you know, you get the most seasoned group in the in the league. That's tough. Who's yeah. ready for some trivia? <laughs> Should we call Ian? Oh come on! You're gonna make us look so dumb again. No. <laughs> Who is the last team to beat out the Tampa Bay Lightning in the playoffs? After they won a Stanley Cup. Ottawa Senators. The Ottawa Senators. <laughs> Let's throw three more uh, things onto that stat. No. Just like Jerry what? Properly. The last time that the Lightning lost a series while they were the Stanley Cup champions. Okay. Yeah. It's happened four, four times since. Three times. Three. Three. Four. No, two. Four. No. <laughs> First round, second round, third round, fourth round. round oh, oh, okay. Yeah, we're talking because they're back to back champs. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah. We're on the same page now. Okay, yeah, yeah. and, and they nice. didn't just lose. Ottawa beat the yeah, shit that, out of them. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, Chara standing over. Uh, yeah, Cavalier. Cavalier. Yeah, yeah. Yep, classic. Uh, Marty Havlat, I think, had twelve points in the five games. Yeah, electric. What did you think of Jason York's comments? He said, "There's only been three players in Sens history that can pull you out of your seat every yeah, night." I that was yeah, funny, yeah. Carlson Stutzla. And Marty Havlat. Like, I knew he was electric, but, like, Hosa Havlat? Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, like, Hosa had his moments for sure, too. But I know what he's trying to get at. Like I meant to say Havlat. Heatley instead of Havlat. But he means, like, electric, like, shiftiness, I guess. Yeah, I think that's what he was ta- getting at. Like, Havlat at that time was, like, a super, super speedy player. And he had serious hands, too, right? Yeah. So he would score, like, crazy electric goals that were like, oh, my gosh, what is this guy? And then he'd disappear for the, the other 90% of the <laughs> he game. He got suspended for kicking. Yeah, but then he'd go off for four goals. I don't know who I would compare him to in like today's NHL, but there's somebody who's probably like him a lot. Like you know, oh, yeah. like, maybe like no, I wouldn't say that. I was gonna say Line A, but Line A scored. I was gonna say Kaprizov. Oh, Kaprizov, a little, I a little more talent, way more damage than he ever did, right? So, oh yeah, that. yeah. Okay. I wouldn't. I, I Standouts, would... maybe Ross might be time. Should we get to some standouts? Okay, I'm gonna leave you boys to it, man. I, I'm probably just pissing everyone off by talking. <laughs> it's it's it sounds tough i i appreciate i mean i'm I mean, living it we got i know we got to give you full credit for for you know 
sucking it up and 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 fighting through it. But um, that's what that's what the, the you know the postcast doesn't sleep. Um, so I'm actually so except for for me because I I, I skipped the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but um no I'm, I'm gonna go with shabbat i saw my shabbat i think he's just you know steady eddie mr shabbat doing his thing out there he's facilitating uh he makes that first top unit like when he's back on that top unit it just looks that much better right like he's it's even more of a flowing machine when he's up there and i think all the guys on the team have confidence when he's on the ice which um just leads to to all the good things for for the sense so um, I got to go with Shabbat. He had three assists tonight. He had, uh, I think it was like 24-ish minutes, maybe just over 24 minutes of ice time, um, doing his thing. So three apples. That's a that's a classy Thomas Shabbat night. He's a classy dude. Loved his mic'd up segment for the uh, photo day too there. So um, big Shabbat guy over here. Um, so going going with Shabbat for my standout. Solid, solid. I, I got to go with Brady. I mean, this guy was so determined to get 30 goals. He gets it with an absolute beauty. Like, that's one of the best shots I've seen Brady take in a long time. And he wanted that goal so damn bad. And Josh Norris wanted to give him that goal so bad. Did you see that two-on-one where Norris had a perfect, perfect shooting lane? Any other time he's shooting that, like always like he's it's your best option to score and he forces a pass over to Brady and he wants Brady to get this so bad he's even like all right I know a really good way to score if you go to this spot on the power play <laughs> it's a guarantee I don't know what it is it just works so Brady you take my spot over here and I'll take your spot in front of the net and it ends up working out and uh ho-hum Brady also gets an assist how about nine shots on goal and yeah you said it Martian like 29 goals, that's good. But being able to say you're a 30 goal scorer, that hits different. And for all those losers, all those fools, yes. saying, losers, losers, Feed them, all <laughs> that's, that's get the all. Get the that's the stick. Get the stick. They're just losers. That's it. I don't even need to go any further than that. Being like, oh, congrats on signing a third line player for a long time uh, at too much money. How do you like that? How many third line players are getting 30 damn goals and doing what Brady does? Like, though, all those people can just shut up. So I'm so glad Brady got 30 because that is absolutely massive. Pilsy, yeah. can I quote Guy Boucher again? Yeah, please. I, I love probably have Guy the Shane voice. For, I, I probably have the voice for Guy Boucher. You sound right like you've been screaming like Boucher. Yeah. I wonder what people think of the contract now. Yeah, well, there, <laughs> there we go. So hey, I, I'm okay, feeling yeah. pretty good about it. And this is like this is only Brady's fourth year in the league here. Like he he's, he's Brady a no. even more. He's a 22 Bills year old student. Did you say he had nine shots? Yeah, I know he yeah, gets he... a lot of shots, but like you know, he's hunting for thirty when he gets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, oh, dude, it was, the last two games, it's been obvious that he that's been on his mind. Like the kid is trying to get thirty. I'm glad yeah. it happened for him, holy, because he was yeah, and especially if the Sens would have ended up like losing this game, like. He was kind of like making some questionable decisions. I actually thought, like when it came into the offensive play, because you could tell he just really wanted. Oh to score. yeah, <laughs> I mean that Selly tells you everything you need. To oh know. yeah, he was looking for it, but he earned it. He should have thirty goals, Frank. He, he spent half the season without his own, own line mates, right? Like his yep. main guys. Yeah, that, that's those were some sad that's games. something that doesn't show up on that score sheet, right? Like he had a fifteen game drought. Where he didn't have a single goal. That's wild to think of. Yeah, yeah. he hit 30. Yeah, with oh, all here the goals in his way. Let's let Cherry pick like a Leafs fan here, though, and say, yeah, but if you take those 30, you take those. No, I'm not taking, games. but it makes it oh, more yeah. impressive that he's able uh, yeah, to get that's... it in the other ones. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, Martian. Jesus Christ. Yeah, the Leafs, Martian. Sorry. I'm... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so get this. I've got a nice little stat for you here. Hey, call this Cherry Picked all you want. He had zero goals in 11 games in January, and he still finishes with 30. Yeah. That's yep. pretty nice. It's pretty I thought nice. you said he had a 15. Did, was it a 15-game draft? Yeah, it or? was. There was some on either side, but I didn't want to cherry pick. Damn. I just gave you a whole month. Damn. <laughs> and he sat out for the first five games. So so he finishes off the season. Did he have any apples tonight, too? Yeah, he had an apple. Oh, yeah. All season. right. So he finishes the season with 67 points and 100 and 17 penalty minutes. That's captain shit right there. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. And that. why not a why not a game winner to boot? Yeah, for real. Yep. 91% of everyone here in the postcast live after game 82 is saying that he deserves the helmet and shades. Do I have any objections? 
in the no. court. No, that would make perfect sense. Let him take it home and take care of it for the summer. That's captain shit too. Yo, you know what would be the coolest thing ever? Him showing up to one of Matthew Kachuk's playoff games wearing the bike yes. helmet. And shit. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool, but also sad. Like I don't want to see Brady uh, showing up to his brother's playoff games. Like I want him to be busy. Wearing, as, as long as he's not wearing another team's logo, I've had enough of Brady Kachuk wearing other teams' logos. At I times. know, so but. Is, but at least with with Robert Thomas, he flipped it so that it was Thomas eighteen on the front. I, I know, yeah. So that would, that kind of made up for it, but still, Keith, I'm, Keith I, wore any jersey who would ever pay we, him the we've most seen money. Even like photos Smart. of young Brady Kachuk wearing a Bruins jersey, yeah. like there's not, that's that's not cool. And yeah. so keep keep the Flames gear off and cheer on your brother, but that that sounds good to me. Well, he's got uh, I think it was a barstool shirt actually, but uh, there's pictures from I think it was I think it was actually the year before he was with Ottawa, if not the first year he was with Ottawa. I think it was the where, first year. Yeah, where he was at it, and it's uh, <laughs> Ratchu Kachuk, right? The rat. no, well, no, it's it's Matthew Kachuk with a rat head, but then it says the Matthew Kachuk friendship tour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> love that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So, all all that to say, man, there's some disappointment from the year. We'll have plenty of time to digest this one, but to me, the most disappointing part of the year, there's two, and it's both with the Nodak Sens, that Pinto only got five games, and Jake Sanderson didn't get into any. Like, if I want to be a Debbie Downer here as we wrap up the the Sen Central standouts, like, I feel like everyone here wants a eulogy, right? Yeah, it's the Fishermans. I got the Fishermans here. Thanks, buddy. Mm. We're just chatting we it out. DJ, we got to get DJ Smith some of those Fishermans. Oh, friends. my God. Yeah, jeez. Or he just needs to learn how to work at the mute button. Like, you can't be clearing your throat. DJ? Right the oh, God. Uh, one Jesus. one of the funniest guys I've ever heard. It's nuts. Yeah. So, one part of the game, actually, before we eulogize the season, because we want to get Marsh and Yeah, I have one on more that. thing I want to get on the game before we go to. Is it go Victor ahead. Lodine? It is. Thank you. Okay. Thank That's you. what Thanks. I wanted yeah. to bring up. How we I didn't, really, I didn't, didn't see him enough of him, I, I feel like. But, yeah, go, oh, go ahead. He, all right. Yeah, yeah. You were probably um, looking at the bottom of your mug. But that to say, <laughs> he was un, he was unbelievable. Yeah. He might have had the best chance that anyone on power play number two has had in I thought it was months. Josh Norris. No shit. Yeah. That was unbelievable. Did he, rip, did he, rip, he just ripped one, eh? Ripped a one-timer. Oh, yeah. he, and he scored a couple goals like that in Belleville, too. He yeah. only scores nice goals. But I thought he had a few nice chances tonight. You know what? There was a period of the game where I was just listening to Dean and Gord, right? And uh, they were actually kind of ripping on him a little bit. Huh. I, I, they said uh, they they knocked his skating big time, both of them. Yeah, I mean, your first NHL game, maybe stagnant, you're going to look yeah, out of place like, a little. Yeah, fair. Yeah, they I said, thought he was buzzing you know, though, otherwise. Dean kind of made one of those quips that he likes to do where he goes uh, – <laughs> He didn't. He goes. They said his skating wasn't very good. I think what they meant was he doesn't skate. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty crazy. Oh, nice. Uh, as Nate points out here, I want to get uh, Pilsy more on uh, on Victor Lodine in a second here. But Carson Latimer's season is done. I'm honestly shocked they won a game out of that series. Winnipeg Ice move on. Pilsy, what did you see from Victor Lodine tonight? Yeah, I mean, he gets uh, three shots on goal, 10 and a half minutes, a minute and a half on the power play. Like, I I think this was a good showing from him. And like we mentioned in today's episode, Ross, it would have been great to see him in in three games, right? Like one game at the end of the year, that's kind of difficult. But if he would have got in for the Devils, Panthers, and Flyers game, I think we could have seen something good. And my Lord, does that PP2 need help? So it would have been nice to just get some more time there for sure. But I'm excited for Victor Lodine, and he's going to go back to Belleville with um, just a little taste of the NHL, and I think we're going to see a lot from him in this playoffs. I'm so excited to see who's sent down tomorrow. It looks like Kaslik, Kelly, Lodine, and Gus. That's this probably Belleville team's going to be a wagon. Look out. You, yeah, you now, wonder that if... they're in, now that they're in, anything can happen. They've yeah. got reinforcements all over the place, too. We talked yeah, about well, that a little bit. You know the big guns are going to be watching. <laughs> That's an all-time photo of Josh Norris is a weird Love dude, it. eh? Yeah, he's, he, he's one of a kind. Yeah, absolutely. That guy <laughs> needs a new contract. It is sad, though, when a season ends, eh? Like, you see them going off the ice. You're like, man, we've just watched you guys 50 times in the last 100 days. Like, yeah. where are you going? Yeah, what are we going to do without these lovable goofballs on our television screens every night? Oh, that sucks. 
But we got Belleville. Belleville. Imagine, imagine Belleville yeah. missed the playoffs. Then we'd be really. Oh in my god, it'd be tough. It'd be tough. Yeah, it, you guys would be in one for sure. Then that'd be that'd be like. Back in the old days when there was no season happening, you guys would have to create 300 days straight of content without <laughs> hockey. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Clockwork, buddy. Clockwork. <laughs> but hey, they I go like, out on a high note. your best work. <laughs> that was. Yeah. We were grinding, but we also had no other responsibilities but to put out content, right? The world kind of shut down, and we were just shooting the breeze, talking Ottawa Senators hockey. But when we talk Ottawa Senators hockey – we're talking about a team here that won 10 of their last 16 games, and you can even cherry pick a little bit better. They went Ross seven. Ross has heard about that cherry pick comment. Sorry, buddy. Oh, no, that's mean, great. Ross, I didn't mean it. Yeah. Buddy. You don't, you don't cherry I don't think cherry I'm the only but... guy on Hockey Reference who knows that if you click a game and you click another game, it adds it all up for you, buddy. You know, you just got to use the tools that are given to you. I love that. Yeah, it's money. A lot of tools, no, no toolbox. That's the name yeah. of the game for me. Seven, two, and one. In their last 10 games, though, mm-hmm. that's got to be something to give you some uh, some confidence going the offseason. Oh, my God. I just I just literally had a flashback. I was going to say, what year is this? I literally said that, those exact <laughs> words last year. I bet you said those exact words. <laughs> guaranteed. I bet you guaranteed. somebody here, once you pick up those, will go back and find the clip where you said those exact words, except for the record was like 9-2-1 and one or something. Or like, oh, it was 9-2-1. Nine two and nine one, two and one or ten three and one, whatever you want to cherry pick, Martian. Yeah, you, <laughs> you bastard. Nice, but no, <laughs> I, no. Seriously, like that. That was that was pretty funny. Like it feels the same. You feel like everything's all better, right? Same okay. vibes. Yeah, You're looking good. Everything's on the right trajectory. Well, okay, Martian, who's this year's Victor Mete? Then who's who that impressed you down the stretch is going to just disappear. Oh, you you loaded me up for one, you you son of a gun. <laughs> I know who you're thinking. I'm gonna say, no. And I already, I already talked about it though. Yeah, it's I don't Branny. Know, I don't, it's Branstrom. I yeah. think like he looked he looked good, serviceable, great. Oh my I mean, god, this is too numbers. funny. Sheer numbers. This is so funny. I don't think he has zero trade value anymore though. But it's low. Like it's not worth. It's not worth shipping him off. Right. Well, someone might like him. I don't Guys, know. I, I don't know if this is a mistake or not. I, I think it's so funny that I'm going to believe that it was on purpose. So I'm about to pull up. Did you just mention Chris Tierney or am I crazy? <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay, well, we're going to bring up Chris Tierney right now. Who I believe played his last game as a member of the Ottawa Senators tonight. Absolutely. I will this tweet here here from, from H, April 5th. Chris Tierney as the extra forward. There's two likes on that tweet. Can you guess who one of them is from? Williams Martian. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Daniel Offerton's most recent hey, like tweet. <laughs> first of all, great job, Ross. Pulling no, up the I didn't... Out. Oh, the full one like, first? You loaded up those photos and you just plopped them in front of me and Pilsy like it was Master nothing. Was no, no, but I got to be honest. Somebody on Twitter, I'm just scrolling here, and somebody pointed out that Alfie liked that tweet. Oh, my goodness. That's uh, Ryan uh, Hinman, who we oh, just spoke to a little while. Yeah, our boy Ryan. He's probably in here. Uh, he pointed out it was Ricky Miller at SenseFan in Asia who found the tweet. So I went and found the, the 1,200 tweet. A little uh, investigative, investigative journalism. journalism. Oh, my journalism. goodness. Yeah, so Professional Pilsy. That. Professional oh, like, Pilsy. Here's what I'll say though, like about Tierney. He's like he's like vanilla ice cream out there. Like he's like you you could throw him on whatever line you want, and he's making like no impact, right? <laughs> he's he he is the like the only guy I've ever seen who does like skates around an NHL ice ice surface and doesn't do anything but continues to get out there. Like he's, he's not he's not doing anything bad, but he's not doing anything good. He's not exciting anyone. He's not stealing like he. He's he's like zero impact player who you can just throw out there. It's like doesn't usually even touch the puck, but he somehow, you know, is getting shifts. You can't it's, be paying those guys three and a half mil, Martian. It's insane. Like oh. I, I I I mean I'm not. He is like obviously a very good talented hockey player, but like I mean in the NHL he just he just isn't doing it right. He he knows what he can do to get by and just that's it. That's 
that's it. That's there's it. absolutely nothing else. Can you believe that there's a year where he had more points than Brady Kachuk? Yeah, his first year in Ottawa. We've mentioned this a bunch of times. He was he was great. I'll even go as far, and he wasn't just good. He was great for and, a, a and at, that, team. at that time. He was young too, like yeah. very, like quite young. Like what was he? 25, 24? 24. He yeah. was fourth yeah. on the team in scoring behind Stone, Duchesne, Shabbat. So yeah, not. I mean, not a, at that time, he was probably the, the, you know the, the top I, piece of the Carlson trade. <laughs> I think he, he's just done with the team. Like I, I don't think he can be what he used to be. But I think when he gets to Seattle, because I just I still have that picture burned in my brain of Chris Tierney in a Kraken jersey. Every day sends, every day sends brainwash us. He he did a yeah. Photoshop after like before the expansion draft predicting yeah. that Chris Tierney would go. And uh, me too. I can't get it out of my head either. He, he, that's the place. That, it's either there or Arizona. I'm convinced. One of yeah. my favorite moments in Locked On Senators history was Joey Decord asking Pilsy who he thought Seattle was going to take. <laughs> Did you answer it? Yeah, that's yeah. Tyranny. Oh, yeah. And and and, <laughs> uh, and Joey goes, yeah, sick call. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, what was I going to say? You? I wasn't going to say, yeah. who do you think Seattle's taking? Yeah, probably you, Joey. No, That would have been a great answer. Sick call. Yeah. That's so sick funny, call. man. Joey's been elite at the HL level, but every time he goes up to the show, he gets lit up. Not well, like he's got a lot of D in front yeah, of him. I was I mean, say, yeah, look at that's the team. Part of, partially the team. Yeah. Um, Tierney is a free agent, though, so I don't think he's going to be stuck to Arizona. I think he'll find somewhere. You don't think? Seattle. That's I feel like no, I'm I'm just thinking about the two places you could go to rejuvenate your career where you're gonna get a lot of opportunity as a guy who's an NHL right. veteran. You, could, you know, do all the things that I said that he can do. <laughs> can you believe that he's he's twenty seven years there old? And, and not look out of place but not do anything? Then he's yeah. twenty seven years old. He might as well be thirty five. Yeah, it does seem that way. Yeah. He could probably go to Switzerland right now and absolutely light no. it up. Yeah. Switzerland's one of the most like skating forward leagues. Yeah, but it's a, possession league. it's a possession league, though. Mm. I think you might. Get him in the DEL. Mannheim. What are you looking for? Send, send him to the Swedish second level. <laughs> well, like I, I mean, let, let's not get crazy here. The guy's probably still going to be an NHL. For, for, yeah, like, fair, fair. He'll fair. sign a one million one year deal somewhere, yeah. Yeah. What about – what? What actually, I guess. We'll, it's such a can of worms to open, but, like, how do you get rid of Nikita Zaitsev? How? What's it going to take? It's going to be very similar to the Gosses Bear trade, but Gosses Bear is about to hit fifty points. I know, but at at the time he cleared waivers. Like at the time, his value was, uh, but he it's going to take more than that because Zaitsev. I mean, that this guy he just ices the puck. It's insane how often he ices. The puck. It's wild. Yeah. Like yeah. Will Will saying a second rounder. I don't think that gets it done. No, that's not. That's where you start with. I'm. I think. A second rounder, a fourth rounder, and maybe a prospect. <laughs> Honestly, I'm serious. If you, if you can get get rid of him for a second rounder, do it right now. Yeah. There's no way. Because Gothis Bear was Gothis Bear, a second round, and a seventh for nothing. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, dude. That's, that's going to be a very interesting offseason for Mr. Dorian. I, I think he just scratches ass and then just, just ride it out. And then you put him in there when you need him. Oh, Kevin just breaking some news, not Senators related, but we have an emergency backup in goal in Anaheim. Oh, sick. Hey, that's fun. Tom Hodges. It's a lot more go. fun than watching Nikita Zaitsev play Tom. defense. That sounds like a good name. That's a good beer drinking name, Tom Hodges. Oh, yeah. That guy's so, slug. Sean, Sean's asking if we're going to do the postcast for, uh, for Belleville games. We are not going to guarantee them, but if – we can, we will. Yeah, I'm down for that. It, yeah. it will be a game time decision. The bigger the game, the more likely that we'll do one. I've also got to reintroduce myself to my family <laughs> after this 50 day, 50 game and 100 day stretch. Yeah, but, they, gonna say, they they weren't going to recognize you based on your voice. No, no, because they can visually <laughs> see me. <laughs> Jor- Jordy said he missed the game. Martian. Give us your elevator recap of tonight's Senators yeah. victory. <laughs> this is a tough yeah. spot for Martian. He missed half the game. I said, I, uh, that's why I went to him. One time I requested too that Ross only 
goes to Pilsy off the start <laughs> because I hate doing the like the recaps of the game. So I'm just gonna kick it over to Pilsy. <laughs> That's that's a little no, that's a little tic tac toe like, from the game on Tuesday. Us, so, yeah. All right. I mean, no, listen, it was a W. That's my recap. But Pilsy, if you want to give the elevator pitch, you go ahead. Sick, dude. Sick. Yeah, basically, this was a game that the Senators they wanted to make up for last night. Like you could look at look at Timmy's reaction last night. He was absolutely pissed on the bench. Uh, but the boys knew they didn't want to end the season like this. A lot of milestones to be had. And who leads them into the battle but Brady friggin' Kachuk gets his 30th goal. Nine shots on goal as well. Gets an apple in there too. How are you? Forsberg shut the door. The Philadelphia Flyers, they have a lot of work to do. Martin Jones, I told you on today's episode, if Martin Jones starts, it's a guaranteed W. So I hope you guys Followed along on betonline.net because I'm a little richer because of that. And the Senators are an absolute wagon. And this momentum at the end of the season is going to carry into next year and they're going to go to the playoffs. Let's go. <laughs> yes, we got a let's go from Billsy on the last postcast of the season. Fired up. <laughs> Fired up. Um, what are some other topics? Hit us in the chat. We got time to shoot the breeze here. It's not like my voice going to get any better. Um, I'm slightly better throughout. Like, you know what we're gonna do right so. now? Well, while, while we get some questions in, ask any question you want off season, tonight's game, whatever. You know what we're gonna do? I don't think it's officially updated, but we are gonna do a spin. Of well, the now game. we're locked. Well, now they're locked in to what seventh, Ross? They are locked in to seventh place right here i'm trying to see yeah one 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 that means that it's already updated with tonight's scores sweet I, i've got a spin ready here too let's all do one okay ready okay. i'll go last oh shit ross i know it's less fun I, i'll do one for you guys too just so you can see it okay fine oh okay. Ross. Nothing. this is my spin this is my spin Oh, your spin's man. worse. Your spin's <laughs> worse. Wait, do a spin for me. Yours is the middle one. Oh, That's so man. boring. Oh, I saw the Sun's logo used, pop up it, there. I got my hope up. It used to be so much more entertaining when it was one, two, and three. This yeah. one, two business, nothing, nothing happens. Agreed. Yeah, they just move down one every time, it seems. Just ridiculous. I think we should just expect to, to pick eight. That's my. No, opinion. it's going to be seventh. I, I feel it in my bones, Martian. Staying yeah. at seven. Nick's, Nick's got a great question here. How much is it going to cost to get Fiala or Shea Theodore? Pilsy, which one would you rather? Vegas isn't trading Shea Theodore, so I'll I'll nix that one. And Fiala, it, it's, it's going to be tough. I mean, it's got to come with an extension. You probably have to, like, you can't give the Wild any sort of cap, but they're going to want... You can't give them salary whatsoever. You can't give them any, like, so Connor Brown, for me, is out of the equation. Even though he's a guy they would want, they but can't he, afford him. Even Alex Formanton, because he's an RFA? Alex Formanton would be... But he's an RFA. What's his next deal? He's going to make one or two. Would fit the bill, yeah, but that's, that's fine. They just need someone to get them through these couple of years here while they have the massive buyout, and they, they need... Uh, they, they need a team that they can roster that has enough depth to carry them deep into the playoffs. So they're going to need a roster player, probably a draft pick and maybe a prospect. Like it's got all going to be about low cap value. And yeah, the Sens, the way that the Sens have playing, that. The way that guy's playing too, though, Pills, I'd almost put him in the same bucket as Shade Theodore. Like why would they want to get rid of him? Like they can't afford him, Martian. I know they can't like they, but they, there's things that they can do to, to probably They'd have to move like three guys. Yeah, and, no, it's there's really there's no way. You think there's that no that way. for sure he's the guy that they decide to get rid of? Yeah. Him? They don't want to. He's like, he's, he's outpriced himself. Player. I know, but it's just like that's just like a crazy decision that they have to make right there. Like that's the guy they got to move on from when he's like so electric. Like just having him in the lineup is like it's gonna help you win every single night. Definitely, if but he sends in of getting him, I'll be thrilled. And I was kind of like not stoked at the beginning, but like I'm pretty sure this guy's put up like 30 points in his last 20 games or something ridiculous. Like we that. looked he at does. the splits, the second half of his season is absolutely nasty. But um, oh, I forget. Where well, I'm no, sure nobody's taken nobody's taken a 35 year old Zuccarello with two years left on his deal at six million. Yeah, but Zuccarello's had a good year. I know. But oh, yeah. I was going to say, uh, Martian, unless Fiala absolutely loves it in Minnesota and is going to take a hometown discount, which 
from reports around the league, it sounds like Kevin Fiala loves Kevin Fiala like Kanye loves Kanye. Uh, yeah. That kind of seems like the vibe. So I don't think he's going to be taking a hometown discount to stay in a cold, uh, I don't want to say small city, but it, it's not uh, its not one of your marquee American cities where uh, you want to flash your cash. So I don't yeah. think he's really going to be taking a discount to stay there. And if he's going to come to Ottawa, he's going to want to get paid, which... Senators can do it. So, and if, put your money where your mouth is, uh, Pierre Dorian. Like, we're, uh, we're in year two of there, unparalleled man. success. The only way you do that is by adding the, the right pieces at the right time. And Kevin Fiala, he would be that piece. Yeah, I mean, they'd, they'd have to give up. I mean, like, they, got, they have tons of futures that they could give up, right? Like, tons I think that, the, you know, this year's draft pick is out of the question unless you, you can do it with an extension somehow. Like, it can, is that even, like, a possible time frame, like, at the draft to get do yeah. a sign Oh, yeah. Trade? Yeah. Okay, so what what would you do there? Would you give up this this year's first-round pick for him? As long as it's not one or two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm it, pretty much in the same boat. I think that you can you can, you can can do that. Yep. I would give up a seventh overall pick, and uh, and another like pretty good piece. But here's the they thing: want a roster like, player. everybody, they want everybody. A roster player. I would do a seventh and Formanton. So would I. As of long course. as the extension is there, it's got to be five years at least. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There needs to be an extension. That's like without a question. But think well, about it, right? Think about all the guys that the Sens have. Like, not not all of these guys are gonna have room on the on yeah, the big club, right? Hey, they, exactly. they'd have. Uh, <laughs> Sokolov, like all these guys that they've they've got coming up the pipe, even Lodine. on defense it's getting tight, right? Like, Lodine. <laughs> yeah, throw Lodine in there. No, seriously, I think he's got a well, chance. Well, Parker Kelly's in pen on the fourth line. Yep. Yeah, Parker Kelly's for sure in already. Castle looks in. I yeah, mean, but he's they, just taking Gambrell, I mean, there's basically dude. Basically, two spots left for like all the guys we've we've mentioned essentially right there, right? So, and we need a spot for Drew. Tons of excess. So they need to maybe what if they get Drew and Fiala? Then it's done deal. No, that's too they much. Have no farm. <laughs> Man, I would not want to give up Alex Formanton, but no. Kevin Fiala is is an elite hockey player. Yep. I think that it, you give them the first, and that's all said and done. That's done deal. No, they need to replace him on the roster. They need a roster player back. They won't do it. That's they've right, got they, Rossi. They've got Rossi coming up. They've got lots of young talent. They could grab someone off free agency. That, or like, or I guess they don't have money for that. But yeah. no, they can't. I mean, maybe they get Kuzmenko on a cheap deal, nine nine hundred. True. Yeah. And they say you're going to take Kevin Fiala's spot. But wow. I don't think Kuzmenko would take a discount either. He's probably no. But he's on. A, he's on a no. No. He's on a one one year. Nine hundred twenty-five k. He has to be paid for right? one year. That's, oh yeah. right. Yes. Just like yeah, you're right. Yep. They they so, say yeah you could come true. and get your opportunity and win and, and they so could be like nice. yo yep. they'd be like yo come play with Kaprizov yep yeah I that's mean, actually probably the path did they play together I want to say they came up with that let's 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 put it let's put it to the press boys let's tweet it out let's no, get it well out you there. that's yeah, I mean, smart you're Take sitting on one of the biggest scoops in the world right now but we'll leave it at that <laughs> Jesus <laughs> but if you're yeah. Kuzmenko oh, and you're like man. I need. I have one year to up my value as much as I can. Why wouldn't I play with Kirill Kaprizov? Genius, man, Martian. You're smart as you are, good looking. Yeah. Another another person met, mentioned Average. Nikolai Ehlers. That that would be a dream. I don't think it would happen, but he would be another electric winger who would come in and really fill out. I think we've realized a top six forward is even more important than a top four defenseman. Is that Agreed. fair to say? Yep. Yes. Well, because you think you have one from within here in Jake Sanderson. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois is a restricted free agent as well, but I, th- I think center's pretty under control now. Yeah, that- I'm not really interested in Dubois. Not because he's not uh, a good player. Like- it just, it's not needed. Career uh, high, 29 uh, goals for Dubois this year, not 30 like Brady Kachuk. That mm-hmm. fire sale is going to happen, right? That, that Winnipeg fire sale. My boy Ben says or is asking, do you think that management will consider sending Stutzla an offer this summer? I think it would be fantastic. But if I'm Tim Stutzla, yeah, exactly. I would never accept an offer this no. offseason. Absolutely need to try, but they'll – I mean, what's Stutzla going to say? Like, unless, He's going to say nine, Martian. Nine Danka. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No Danka. No <laughs> oh, Danka, yeah. No Danka, no Pierre. Danka. I'm going to go next year, and I'm going to put up 100 points, and you're going to have yeah. to give me 10. Thank you very much. 
That's the way it's going to be. Doc, Doc asks, how does Ottawa get oh. out from Colin White's contract? Buyout, easy. Pil- Pilsy's got yeah. this one. Go ahead, Buyout, easy. I, I like... I, I love Whitey. I think the boys love Whitey. I think he's been dealt an unfair hand with the injuries, but you got to take advantage of that one-third buyout uh, clause. You, you, you have to. So Whitey's gone, and I, I hope he finds a good spot. I, I think there's a team that's going to really like him, and they're going to give him a more reasonable contract, and things are going to work out for him. So I'm not worried about it, but I would be shocked. I, I would act like... I would be very, very surprised if they don't buy out Colin White. Yes, me too. One third of the total. I mean, you kind of just have to from that standpoint yeah. itself. I want to get to Ryan's question asking who's the most Ottawa Senators free agent, which questionable veteran will be brought in. I'm trying to pull up. Uh, internet's being a little finicky with me here as I, I try yeah, to. Yeah, you got to give me some options there, Ross. I'm not. Yeah. Up How about Evgeny Malkin? Sound good? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go for that. Yeah, you yeah. down? Yeah. That'll, that'll do. Um, how, how should I sort them here? Like, uh, just running through the list super fast off the top of my head. If you um, just take the shittiest ones that come to mind as soon as you see the list, those Dan- are probably... Danny DeKaiser. <laughs> yeah. That's, no, that's he's been in the A. Better. He's been in the A basically all year, hasn't he? No, he's been paired with Murray Sider and still has 11 points in 50. What's Johnny Oduya up to? Yeah, not much. Oh, I was thinking of Abdulkader. Abdul oh, Abdulkader. Ah, nice job by me. They're trying to pronounce that. Nice. You know, it could be a sneaky bottom six. Oh, he's RFA. Never mind. I was going to say Casper Cap, and it would be a nice little bottom six guy. Uh, Brian Rust is a free agent. I'm not hoping they completely avoid free agency altogether. It's never worked. Oh, you don't want Zach, really Zach Sanford? If they go, if they sign any of these guys, I'll snap. Unless it's Claude Giroux, right? That's the only yeah. one. Fair. Fair. Yep. No, I wish we could narrow it down. There's so many names here, and a lot of them will resign. So we'll we'll get back to that topic. They've got plenty uh, of depth. I'm not worried about. The, I mean, they've got depth galore, right? They've got yeah. young guys now who can come up and down like crazy. Mighty well, Mike asks here. Here's a good depth up. question. Do you resign Tyler Ennis, Mark? No, no yeah. absolutely uh, not. No, you don't. I, no. I like it. I I want him as an extra forward, someone that if you if you need a guy to play, and I feel like he fits in good with this team and. I feel you, man. I like him too. I just you can't I have just, all young guys, and I don't want a young guy sitting in the press box. So, I think at this point, like the young guys are now like the veterans. Like you just got to turn the page on that idea. I think that like you can't just be bringing in. This is that would be the bad free agency acquisition that they would make. It would be him. And I hate <laughs> yeah. to say it because I like Tyler Ennis because he's a good player. Tyler, um, you know, Ennis. at times, right? Like he 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 has great stick handling. And he does great things. And he's a nice dude. And I think elite vibes, yeah, great vibes. vibes for sure. He, Edmonton legend, like minor hockey legend. But let me, synergy. let me tell you, like he he just he he's not up to speed with with the current game. It would be like. They, they just don't need a guy like that right now. I'm just I, – I, I can't I, I can't think of what I'm trying to exactly say here with this. But, like, I like Tyler Ennis, but I do not want the Sens to sign him at all. No. I, I would like to see him back on a PTO, see if he can earn a spot in camp. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, for the third time in a row. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. Uh, jo- Joshua asks, any update on mm-hmm. Angus Crookshank? Not really, but we do believe he is close to, if not fully healthy. And they just want to be on the extra side of caution. Um, do, 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 it's got to be thousand percent. A thousand. Who would you rather buy out, Nikita Zaitsev or Matt Murray? I'm going Zaitsev. Why, I'm actually going Murray. Okay, Martian. Let's let's hear it. Well, it's more money for one, right? And it's longer term. That's the other thing, right? You got to. I think there's all sides of his more oh, term. Two years as well. No, they're both two years after this one, right? I'm looking at it now. It, are they both two? I thought Murray got more than that. Anyways, oh matter. yeah, same same length. So yep. Okay, same length. Okay, it's more money for Murray, and he's gonna he's not gonna play. He's he's not to me. He's not even in the equation anymore. Forsberg's the starting goalie. That's what you're going with. Uh, Gustafson has to play next year. Murray's the odd man out again. This situation here, I think, and I mean, I don't think that they're going to buy him out. They're going to try to get him off probably at some point, somehow, some way. But he's 
he's not going to play. I don't think he's going to play. They just don't trust him. And I don't Martian, trust him. That's part of my argument to keep him is he's, he's not going to play. Whereas if you keep Nikita Zaitsev, DJ Smith is going to put him in the lineup <laughs> unless he's dead. That's like, a good point. Right? Yeah, and but- and here's, here's what I was tinkering around with this morning. And you guys can tell me if this is absolutely dumb or not. So we know Gustafson, you can't have, you can't have Forsberg, Gustafson and Murray, because if you send Gus down, he's on a one way. Now he's not going to clear waivers. Guarantee someone will take a chance on him. So keep, keep Gus in the AHL for decent amount of time and have Sogard as your floater guy for when Murray gets injured. And hopefully Murray can up his value a a little, and maybe you trade him and you, you don't have to add as many sweeteners or as big of a sweetener. And then if you're not happy with it, then you just buy out his his remaining two years. Cause Yeah, but Pilsy, what if he comes out of the gate and he plays like shit and they go oh oh and or one and ten to start the season again? And then Matt, it's all Matt Murray's fault. Like you want to risk that with the guy I, you, you don't trust? I don't But know. what if you have him at a backup role where he's not playing hardly ever and like Forsberg just takes the reins here and Matt like because when Matt Murray's healthy He's good. Like mo- most of the time, he, when he's healthy, he's good. So if you get him in less of a role where he's not getting injured or there's not as much pressure, and hopefully there's a better team in front of him, I, I think he could be useful. But I mean, Jesus, like looking at that contract, like it's an absolute disaster. I so, know. Like to me, it's like, man, that's that's too long to have him on on the books, right? Like two years, have a backup goalie who's blocking the young tendies that we have coming up. There's a few of them. Yeah. So like, but I'll, I'll I'll re re uh, kind of visit it like this, Martian. Are you comfortable enough to have a tandem of Forsberg and Gus? Yes, yes, yeah. I am. Yeah, okay. I I know I hundred percent trust Anton Forsberg. And that's Gus not really the question, though. Do you trust Gus in a backup role? Like, do you trust yeah. Gus? Yeah, 30, no, in a backup games? role, like, in a backup role. Yeah, hundred percent, I do. Yeah, yeah, and I think it'll be a great learning experience for his development as well. I think he'll become a better goalie because of being a backup. He's got to earn that contract. And so, he's learning, yeah. and he's learning from you know a fellow Swede. Like that's a fun tandem, probably for him, right? And he's going to have playoff experience, so that should help. So yeah, I, <laughs> I, I could see it, but uh, I just if we're going back to the question, do you buy out Zaitsev or Murray? I'm sticking with Zaitsev. If if like you could only do one of those, I don't think they'll do either. But if they did, I'd no, be happy. They have to I'd do be- one of those. Well, they're going to do Colin White, and how many buyouts can you have? Is it, uh, Did they run out of room to do that? I think so they're two or two. three. And they've still it's... got Bobby Ryan on the books, so they, yeah. they can only do one. <laughs> and Dion. But that was more just when, when L.A. bought buyouts, him out. And there's, a, there's, there's a difference. So yeah. I'm pretty sure they can only actually do one. And yeah, if, I'm, right. if I'm the finance guy, <laughs> I'm not a big finance guy, but you have to do the one that's the one-third. You save ten yes. over $10 million in real money. Yeah, 100%. Oh. So well, like, it's kind of an actual, actually a bit of an absolute or absolute obsolete. Com- <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> nice. it's, an obsolete, it's an obsolete conversation because neither is going to happen. Probably, yeah, fair. Because fair. it's going to be white. Yep. Okay. Well, obsolete conversation. Way to ruin the next three months of locked on senators. <laughs> we do, however, have the winner of the final bike helmet and glasses. It's the captain. Just Hell fitting. Yeah. It's fitting that the captain is taking home the bike helmet and shades for the summer. Yeah, what a unit. absolutely. What a unit is right though, eh? This guy, like, make that the logo. Somebody said on Twitter the other day that Brady <laughs> Kachuk looks like the senator. <laughs> what? It'd be funny to get his profile and just like cartoon it and put it on there and see if it makes. If only sense. we knew someone who was good at Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, maybe on a slow day i'll get that done yeah i mean it'd be obsolete but i think you could should do it anyways <laughs> go cherry pick some stats yeah i will yeah, hey uh people, are mentioning, on episode <laughs> people are mentioning too uh, we can't do one tomorrow i need a day off my voice we'll be back monday for sure monday yeah, today's Friday. Jeez, this week flew by. What an amazing finale. Oh, my God. Yeah. Final week of the season. And Mighty Mike pointing out there's been tape on Brady's hand all year. Like, this guy has been playing through it, and he yeah. still gets 30 points. Still gets 67 points. Sorry, 30 goals, 67 points. Unbelievable. Now, this is a great conversation. We'll end on this one because we're talking about the Kachuk. We are doing a little bit more of a wide-ranging eulogy here. Muck with a great question. 
How the hell is Calgary going to sign Matthew Kachuk and Johnny Goudreau? They're they're not. They're not going to sign Matt Kachuk. Why? He's RFA. What are you going to do? And just got hundred him. points, but he's I mean, Goudreau had a hell of a year. Oh, they, I mean, they'll, they'll they'll qualify him. They're qualifying him at nine million though, and his salary last this year was incredible. And the big yeah. issue, if Sean Monahan doesn't have another year on his deal, it's not a problem. You got money for both of them. But Sean Monahan has another year on his deal with uh, no trade clause, so makes things I'm tough. Pretty sure it's and a he well just known. had a terrible isn't year. It a, isn't it a well known fact that Matthew Kachuk doesn't want to sign another deal in Calgary? He just wants to qualify and then well, I mean probably. If they if all of a sudden the team's turned it around this year under Dale Sutter, I'm sure he's having fun playing forty points or forty goals, hundred points. Like yeah, I think I think that the narrative probably changes. Yeah, I don't know. Fair. I'd say the, I'd say the conversation probably changes. I don't know. St. Louis isn't a, isn't a bad team either. I think he's always got like he's, he's even said it. I'm pretty sure that he wants to go play there. And if they can't get him at a good deal, we know how the Chuck guys go in negotiations. He'll straight up walk. He'll just be like, Fine, <laughs> qualify me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pilsy, any final words? He's got, by, he's got them by the balls right now. Oh, yeah, 100% he does. Um, Pilsy, any final thoughts on the 2021-22 season? I believe we did over 50 postcasts. It's been quite a ride. Yeah, it really has. And, and that's why it's, it's such a joy to cover the Senators because even when they're bad, they are interesting. Like, there is always something to talk about. And uh, this has been a year for the books. I mean... Countless stories, countless ups, countless downs, uh, guys stepping up into different roles, trades happening, like waiver wire pickups, like this team just doesn't stop. And it, it's been an absolute blast. And thanks, uh, Ross mentioned all the postcast things. When we started the postcast, we weren't sure if people were going to like this, like is it worth doing, etc. And people have absolutely loved it. The chat is always lit. We love coming out for the postcast when, when we can. So Thanks Eric, for everyone for supporting us. And uh, yeah, getting a win to finish off the season like this was a beautiful thing. The third official season in the book for the Send Central since we joined Locked On Senators Pilsy, the first 82 game season yeah, that wow. we've done covering this team. So it's been a wild ride from postponed games to you having to postpone a trip to Winnipeg to come see that mm -hmm. game that was supposed to be on January 15th to us having to postpone our visit to the Ralph. We're doing that next year, boys. Yep. We're going to the Ralph, 100%, no excuses. La Quinta Suites in Grand Forks doesn't know what's coming. The K train, we're going to ride all the way from Winnipeg down to Grand Forks. We have lots planned, a home opener party, just like we – Martian, pick it up there. Like that party we had on Saturday was unbelievable. Yeah, I, I haven't been able to comment on that, and I, I that was so much fun, you guys. Like the the guys who showed up and the gals who showed up, like oh, we had just a, a really really fun time uh, pregame. Um, I mean, and it continued into the CTC. We basically had the party in our section. Yeah, I mean, the CTC in our section was just absolutely incredible. A, a few Habs fans snuck in there, but we'll, we'll, I mean. What can you do? But um, you know, every every good yeah, like the parties going in the intermission, like in between, oh, yeah. like in our section, like we were just bopping and rolling. It was great. Like yeah, yeah, it was really fun. And and I mean, that's just the beginning, right? That was the first one we did. I'm sure everybody who was there re remembers how fun that was and is going to want to do it again. And I think that um, we're going to get even more people who maybe had a little FOMO who who didn't make it, you know, fear of missing out. So we don't want them to have to miss out on the next one. So we'll do it again. I think the home opener would be a great time to do it, Ross. It'd be great to do a live show, I think, this time. Like, just maybe oh, like, yeah. mix in a little bit of that. Like, I, right. I don't know. I always dream of doing us uh, us doing, like, a little, like, pregame in front of the CTC, you know? Yep. Like, oh, yeah, something like that where we can have the background, right? It'd be cool. So, I don't know. We got ideas. That was very, like, we, that we went as basic as possible for that Oh, one. yeah. You got to start but slow. You got to start we know, and then grind it out. Yeah, but now that we know oh, people thanks, are actually, Nathan. Now that we know people are actually going to show up because <laughs> we weren't sure. Yeah, yeah. even like, when we, we were, got there. Yeah, now that we know people are actually going to end up coming, like uh, we we can start, uh, you know, getting some bigger ideas and, and start, you know, expanding how we do it and making it even more fun for everybody. So. 100%. And we want to thank people like Heavy Metal, D.I.K., where it's just like 
We've been doing this every day. I think we take for granted that people are still just discovering the show. So hopefully we're getting better and better. I don't always sound like this. I promise. I don't think we would have got to 550 episodes if I did. But we're just we're just flying by the seat of our pants, but having fun doing it, no doubt. And I'm glad that I got a reminder here. We've got a giveaway to do for the final card of the season. And everyone here, you have to go follow Dylan. An absolute beauty. Yeah. He just bought two shirts off us. We're buzzing with the shirts. So get yours in now. Sizes. Supplies are running out. Yeah. We, we've got mediums, larges, and I believe one or two extra larges left. It's been fantastic to see everyone jumping on board and it's given us more ideas for what to do. We'll have another piece of merch out for the home opener next year. But Dylan at Fighting Stutzla, who I'd love for you to all go follow on Twitter, Drew Labelt. You are the winner of the autographed Mark Stone card. Dylan picks the winner. So save your mean tweets Label. for Dylan, not for me. Drew Labelt, you are the winner of the Mark Stone autographed nice. card. And uh, Dylan will reach out to you. So that's great to see. Rosie, wake up. She just put in the chat. Brady got the helmet. Where you been? We got it already. Get over it, Rosie. Hey, Come on, she Rosie. gets an excuse. She gets an excuse. No, she came in late. It's cool. All right. Let's she... end the postcast by having a laugh at Pilsy and I expense. I'm pretty sure this is why I don't have a voice. This is after Drake Batherson's goal on Tuesday night. Four in a row for the first time since 2017. I'm Ross Levitan alongside Brandon Piller, reporting on a 5 4 overtime victory. And Pilsy, the game winner, with all that and more. Drake Batherson puts this one away. Never in doubt, Ross. Let's go. Two goals and an assist for Tim Stutza. Lots to break down tomorrow. Unlocked on Senators. Enjoy it. From the CTC. Woo! Tim. Let's go. Timmy. <laughs> That, 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 that Timmy at the end absolutely killed me. So good. <laughs> that was a great that video. Was a Timmy! <laughs> little bit of a fanboy, I'll admit. Yeah, and Mr. Brightside in the background, too. Like That's all yeah, time. Great way to talk to us. Um, Pilsy, final, final thing here. Tim Stutzla finishes the season with 58 points. What Just is shot. your prediction? For Tim Stutzla's 2022-23 season. Well, what is Stepan getting his third year? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will pull that up. Um, yeah, I, I said it before. I'm I'm heating up on Tim Stutzla. Like even midway through the season, I was like, yeah, I still think. Uh, what? Let's hear it, Ross. Well, that was the lockout shortened year, so there were only 48 games. He had 44 points in 48 games. So, I mean, that's probably like a 70-point pace. Math yep, guy. Exactly. Even, even more probably. So, yeah, I'm going to say 73 points for Timmy next year. Like, he, he's just blown my mind with how great he, he can be, especially in the center ice position, especially if you get him with two wingers that can put the puck in the back of the net and he continues to dominate on the power play and maybe even get, throw some shorties in there too. Like, this kid is just a superstar, and uh, he's only scratching the surface here. Did you say, what, 75? I said 73. Oh, you can round up a little bit to 75 there? He's 73. Only 73? You think he's only going to get five more? Just watch. It's going to be 73. Man, he went the first 20 games. He only had eight points. And he doesn't have Kevin Fiala yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Ross? That's true. Pilsy? 100-point season for Tim Stutzla. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to say 88 for Tim Stutzla next year. All right, nice. I think, and, point per game, I think point per game is a given. Yeah. Wow. I mean, he's been over a point per game now for the last 26. So. Yep, that's fair. Man, You're this right, has been MB. fun. This is, this, this is always the way it is, eh? I'm always on the, the, the way over optimistic end. Yep. Pilsy, Pilsy likes to play a conservative, which is yeah, fair. Well, well, smart, yeah. He's smart that way. Like it, it's better. Then to I just split the middle, however we do it. Like you get any a good, taste like, of everything here. Like any good host does. Yeah. Man, next time we'll we'll get you in a uh, a Belleville postcast, Marshall. We'll make sure all three of us oh, can yeah. get well, in there. Well, I know maybe um, a, maybe the a series time, win. I, eh? I, I, Everyday sense there. I know he's been covering Belleville. He's been doing a great job. He's gonna be paying way closer attention than me. He might be a good like 
post cast replacement for me. I know he's showing interest, so I think throwing him in the mix might be cool. But oh yeah, we can get him in watch, hey, if I'm watching for sure, I'll jump on. I might actually right. have BOTG if uh, Martian. We gotta go. We gotta go. Might, Let's I go to a game. B- yeah, I might have BOTG out there. Boots yeah, on the ground. No way. Yeah, I'd be all I'm time. Gonna, I'm gonna head up to Belleville. Why not? I all actually right. have, I have family in Belleville, um, so I can make that work. Let's do well, it. Well, Belleville is finishing their regular season tomorrow. And to find out who's going to join them on their postseason quest, you can follow us on Twitter at Send Central. The Senators Media Day will conclude tomorrow and Sunday. And we'll be there for all the fallout, a eulogy. We'll do player individual shows on each player, how their seasons went, what we expect going forward. We've got more interviews coming soon. Belleville's going on a run. We'll take care of all the Sens prospects around the world. And how the hell is this going to be a playoff team next year? But for tonight, we say goodbye following a 4-2 Sens victory over the Philadelphia Flyers. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us in the postcast all season long. Locked on Senators ain't going anywhere. We'll be back Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we'll do it all over again Monday, Tuesday. You get what I'm saying. All right. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. We'll chat on Monday. Thank you so much for Brandon Piller and at Laleem's Martian. I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the final postcast of the 2021 2022 Ottawa Senator 